Good. Lots of topics tonight. First one, I mean, really, really important stuff. So first topic uh, that we have on this week's uh, Tokyo Tonight is talking about uh, Toto. I mean, Japan is basically 30 to 40 years in the future. It is actually kind of funny. So many people tell me how they, uh, Japan is this big paradox where people have this image of Japan being in the future. It definitely used to be that way with mobile phones and with various sorts of tech. And they come here and then they find that, you know, it is in some ways it's ahead and in some ways it's behind. And there are all these paradoxes when it comes to technology. And it's true. There's actually a word in it in Japanese called Galapagosization. Uh, Galapagos, the ization is cut in Japanese, and it's much easier just to add cut onto anything. And you know, it's just because Japan is basically uh, technologically, culturally, linguistically isolated, and it's big enough that can actually it's not dependent on things coming from America. Um, or, or Europe to, um, you know, to have cultural and technological trends. It just means that things happen here on different cycles. And one thing that, uh, you know, when mobile phones used to be ahead and they came, went, and then they fell behind and then they were ahead in TV screens and then Taiwan and Korea made better TV screens and, you know, everything's back and forward. Uh, toilets are definitely still far in the future and it just just as uh, you have TV shows about somebody, you know, getting caught in the time slip and going back to the Middle Ages, uh, or, or going back to like a, 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 a you know stone age sort of uh, civilization pretty sure anybody uh, in, in such a scenario they don't talk often about the toilet problems that they would have if they suddenly got transported back to the middle ages um, but uh, if you want to have an idea of what that would be like uh, live in Japan for a few years and then travel to uh, any other supposedly civilized country and try using the toilets it's just uh, horrible uh, I actually literally, even when I was, even in Asia, like near Asia, staying in nice hotels when they don't have Japanese style toilets, I, I would actually go have a shower <laughs> after. <laughs> uh, you just you just don't feel clean. It's it's horrible. It, it actually ru it ruins you for uh, toilets everywhere else. And um, this idea apparently is not a new idea. This idea about toilets that will actually diagnose your poop and tell you how you are doing health wise. Um, in fact, I saw uh, Wataru Ng, uh, who's a naturalized Japanese citizen on Twitter, who tweets interesting stuff. Uh, when I posted this on Twitter today, he said, hey, this idea was, you know, thrown around 30 years ago. The idea, not the poop. Uh, and it was, uh, yeah, apparently it wasn't successful. People were a bit creeped out. Now there are people talking about smart toilets, you know, and have your toilet hooked up to the internet. I don't know why you'd want to hook it up to the, you know. Well, I mean, I suppose there is a joke about Twitter being uh, people basically just shouting out to the world that they just took a crap. But, you know, you can literally have it actually automatically do that right now. But, um, yeah, it, it to me, this makes sense. Look, I, 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 and I, maybe 30 years ago, I mean, Japan was able to get used to the idea of, of shooting water all over the place. Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, the story on Project X, if you ever get to, if you only watch one Japanese TV show ever, I'm into documentaries and nonfiction and uh, Project X, a series about how stuff got invented in Japan. The story of the Toto Washlet Toilet on Project X is just one of the best episodes. And it was by an engineer who was trying to help his old dad who had hemorrhoids and just had a, a, a life of just misery and pain pooping and he, he did this to basically help his old granddad and the whole country sort of adopted it and it was hugely controversial when it came out they used television advertising and it was a big big controversy but um it uh yeah it, it is now absolutely standard in japan it's not far of a step one to uh to, to actually put sensors in there to pick up health data Plus, I actually think, I mean, look, I've got a watch which counts my steps and my heart rate and, you know, now all of these things that have oxygen, what do they call them, oximeters, uh, things that measure the oxygen in your blood. I, I have something which measures how long I'm sleeping and whether I'm snoring, uh, you know, on, on, on my mattress. I've got a smart scale that I stand on every day. Um, I collect a ton of health data and I'm hoping that, you know, and it actually has helped me, like, lose 10 kilos, more, more than that, 13 kilos uh, since the pandemic started. So, you know, I think we're living in this age where, and I'll give you another case, I have a family member um, overseas who uh, had um, cancer and uh, successfully uh, went through a round of chemo and was able to get the chemo uh, based on uh, sort of latest cutting edge stuff where they can actually match your genetic profile to, uh, to get the, the, the right amount of radiation. So basically they can actually do it with uh, heaps less than they would give you on a standard course and a higher percentage of a positive outcome, and that's what happened. So with all this sort of information and this data that you can collect about yourself, it, it can have positive sort of, you know, just for self-awareness, like a like a set of scales. 
um, and down the road for other sorts of things. So for me, the other the idea of having uh, you know sensors telling me you know if, <laughs> if I'm eating unhealthy stuff or if I need to be more careful or or, or even early signs of uh, you know illness or other stuff like that. To me, this makes total sense. So. Um, you do that thing. I'll, I'll be first in line for a smart toilet. I I, I am sold. Um, although a lot of people kind of scoffing at the idea that no people will never buy it. But that's that's my take on that. I think a smart toilets are the 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 toilet wave of the future, which I know doesn't sound uh, very attractive, but that's that's what I'm thinking.